This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, we're going to wrap up our look at transcoding by talking about transcoding in larger than HD projects, as this is becoming more and more relevant as editors and productions in general make the move to 2K, 4K, and Ultra HD resolutions. Now, there are certain things that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're working with this type of workflow, so hopefully this tutorial be sort of like a go-to tutorial if you need to get a refresher or if you're getting into it for the first time it'll be a good primer to get you ready to start transcoding that footage so that it's correct for every project that you work on okay short introduction here let's just get into media composer and let's get started okay so let's command and tab into media composer obviously alt and tab for all my windows friends out there now i wanted to start right away at the project window i actually just received an email from a viewer who started asking me some questions about working in larger than hd i believe it was a 4k project and the first thing they said is well you know the production is shot with camera xyz so what type of project do i need to set up so that this footage that's going to be you know a scope aspect is going to fit into the proper type of project as I always say, and I can't say this enough, that's why I wanted to go over this again, at the end of the day, the type of camera that you're shooting with is really irrelevant. The delivery format, the resolution of your deliverable, your final product, is what you want to make sure that you set your project up for. Now, I'm working in the newest version of Media Composer, version 8.4. And I do want to remind you that, you know, some people out there do have unique project uh, formats or format rasters that they're working with. And you can now easily get in and set your project up to be whatever resolution you might need by simply coming down to the custom option in the format dropdown. Now you could punch in any type of resolution that you might be working with, create that as a project. So this way, when you're done and you go to export this project to deliver it, it will be exactly the way that you need it. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm going to, you know what? Let's work in this project that I'm working on right now. As you can see, it's 1080p 23976, which is perfectly fine because remember, I can switch into any like frame rate project. As long as I'm sticking with 23976, which is what I'm going to, I can work in any Ultra HD 2K or 4K project that is inside that frame rate. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, is simply say okay. Now, here's a great tip for you, and something that I do all the time. Now, this actually goes way back to my old school days on Media Composer, when, you know, you'd have an editor that, you know, likes to work with all their bins open, you'd have 20 bins open, they'd take, you know, 10 minutes to close or open. What I would always do when I go into a project is I'd hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna open your project with all of the bins closed. You know, it's kind of a force of habit thing for me, you know, just like I said from, from the old school Media Composer days, but sometimes it's very handy depending on the type of project that you're going into. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete these two bins and we're gonna start from scratch. And what I'm also gonna do here is I'm going to, let's actually create a new bin first. Let's get some footage in uh, before we actually pick the project type that we're gonna be working on. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is simply right click, we're gonna come down to Link to Media. Remember, no longer AMA Link to, just Link to Media. And I'm in my folder that has all my red footage. Now, something that's important to keep in mind, you'll see that I'll select a couple of these, and I'm simply gonna say Open. Now, I'm gonna get this error that says that it can't actually link to any clips there. And that's okay, because the first thing that's important to keep in mind is that what you're gonna to wanna to do, especially if you're gonna be working with red footage, is I'm going to come into uh, Chrome here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply go to Google, and I'm gonna type in Media Composer AMA. And you can even just type in Avid AMA probably. And you're gonna to wanna to go to the Avid AMA website right here, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you come all the way down to the bottom, and you're gonna to wanna to install the red plugins to AMA link to your media and work with it inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, of course, there are some other AMA plugins in here depending on your workflow, so obviously keep that in mind. You might wanna to check to make sure you're not gonna need a plugin before you start working. Now, of course, I've already installed the plugin and I'm still getting that strange error. Well, why would I be getting that error? I'm just gonna go back to link to media here for a second because the file type that I wanna to link to is not MXF. I'm just gonna let it auto detect. I'll just select the first 
Oh, it's just like the first three or four here. And I'm simply going to say open. And now you're going to see that a bin has opened and these clips have been imported. Now let's take one of these ones here. Okay. This is actually good because it's stretching this footage a little bit, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take all of them. I'm just going to take one of them here. Okay. Let's just take the first one and let's delete it. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick a specific project type to work on. So I'm going to come to the format tab. I'm going to come to the presets. Let's choose a 2K DCI flat project. Now DCI, obviously the Digital Cinema Initiative. So this is a project specifically designed to be shown in the cinema or in the theaters. And I'm just going to select, of course, the like frame rate, 23976. And we're all set to go. Now, again, I'm going to double click on this clip. Now, it's looking a little bit stretched. Now, I'm just going to quickly go through the workflow that we've talked about in the last couple tutorials in case you happen to skip over them, specifically looking for a larger than HD workflow. So, of course, we talked about the source settings. Always the first place you go when you're going to be linking to your media. Now, the one thing that we do need to know that's very important is that the aspect ratio of this project is 185 to 1. So an aspect of 185 to 1. So let's right click on our clip. Let's simply come down to our source settings. Now, of course, because this is red footage, you'll see that we do have the option to get in and adjust many of the red parameters of this clip right here from within Media Composer. I'm not going to go you know, really in depth into this because obviously this is going to be personal preference. But again, like I said, you can get in and tweak these and adjust them however you want. What we're going to do is we're going to come to the Frame Flex tab. Now you're going to see the very first option here is that the image's aspect ratio is 233 to 1. Now for Frame Flex, our Frame Flex aspect ratio, of course, like I just said, is 185 to 1 because we're going to want to have this image fill the frame. Now it's obviously going to be cropped off on the left and right, which I'm okay with. All I'm going to do is simply say apply. Now I want you to see what's going to happen here up here in my preview window as well. As soon as I say apply, this footage is now going to look correct. Now of course if I wanted to keep this as the actual 235 and actually have it letterboxed, we could do that as well. But again, personal preference, I'm going to keep everything full frame. All I'm going to do now is simply say apply. And this clip is ready to be worked with in my timeline. So let's just do that. I'm going to take this clip, I'm going to drop it into my timeline, okay? Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to hit play and you can see that when I hit play, for the most part, and I've got the sound turned down, this is playing back in real time. Now of course what's important to keep in mind is that I am not looking at this at the best possible quality. If I come down here and set this to the best quality, let's come back now and see if this will again play back in real time. You can see, not playing back in real time and it is dropping frames. So we do have a lot of options when we're working in Media Composer with larger than HD media before we actually get into the transcoding process because a lot of people say, Kev, you know what? I just want to skip over that transcoding process. It takes too long. I'd really just rather link to the media and work with it. Well, of course you can do that. Now, if you start out like this with everything at the absolute best possible quality, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to set this back to be draft quality right here. You can start at draft quality right here, which is yellow. Or you can go to the midway point between draft and best right there. And you saw before when I came in and I hit play, this looked pretty good. Playing back in real time. And of course the quality is very good. Now of course if this didn't play back to your liking, of course we could bump this down to be the lowest quality. Just like such. Again we can come back now, you can see the quality difference. Hit play. Does it play back in real time now? Yes it does. Maybe I'll work like this. We do have some new options that were implemented in version 8.3 of Media Composer that I do want to make sure that I point out as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this back to be, we'll just set it back to be mid quality here. And what I want to do is I want to point out the proxy timeline. The proxy timeline can be adjusted right over here inside of the format tab. It's located right here. There's the proxy tab. You'll see that I can drop it down and I can change my proxy timeline to be 1000 by 540, which is quarter quality, or 500 by 272, which is 1 16th quality. And you'll see that as I bump things down, the quality gets really terrible. But the whole purpose of this is that it's actually going to let you get this footage into Media Composer. It's going to let you drop it into a timeline. And if necessary, it's going to let you edit with it as well. Now you'll see depending on the quality that you set for your proxy timeline is going to determine what the quality of the footage is. 
Now what's also important to keep in mind is that this also works sort of as a combination. Now if I bump the quality up here, you'll see the quality up here gets better, even though we are still at quarter quality. I can hit play. And again, this is playing back in real time off my drives. And this footage is actually fairly large. Let's actually see how large this footage is here. Now do I have a bin setting for it? Yes, I do here. This footage is 4, uh, 4,480 pixels by 1920 pixels. So this is 4K, this is huge. And right now, with proxy timeline at best quality, I got it playing back in real time, and the quality is very good. Okay, but you know what? This tutorial is really about transcoding. So why don't we stop right now, and let's talk about how we're gonna transcode this footage to work with it in native Avid Media in our timeline. Now, of course, I know you've watched the last two tutorials, so we know how to get into transcode our footage. All I'm gonna do is simply navigate over here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna simply come down to consolidate and transcode. Of course, we're gonna choose the transcode option and now the transcode window is gonna look a little bit different than it did before. And it's all in, really in the subtleties. Now, what we're gonna do, of course, obviously first is choose what drive we wanna transcode to. So I'm gonna select my G-Speed Studio RAID, okay? The next thing that we're going to want to do is decide, do we want to transcode only link to media? You might have a bin that has clips that have already been transcoded mixed in with clips that haven't. You can simply select them all and say, well, you know what, only transcode the media that has been linked to. Now here's a big one. Now you'll remember that I actually had this set to be my proxy timeline quality of one quarter. Well, I can actually transcode that footage at the proxy quality of one quarter right here but in most cases, you're not gonna wanna do that. You could get in and set that after the fact. We're gonna wanna get in and set this footage to be the absolute best possible quality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the raster dimensions from quarter quality to be the source dimensions. Now next, and probably most important, what do you wanna do as far as the frame rate goes? Do you wanna keep the frame rate as the source's frame rate or do you wanna convert it? In most cases, 99% of the time, you're gonna wanna keep that footage as whatever the source's material is. Don't get in to change that. Media Composer can do that conversion for you. Now, the next sort of going along hand in hand with the source dimensions is what is the target resolution of this file? Now, in most cases, depending on your workflow, chances are you're gonna be choosing either DNX HR standard quality or high quality. Now, obviously this is gonna you know, vary based on the type of drive you're using with a connection. I'm using a Thunderbolt 2 to a 24 terabyte RAID storage here. So I mean, I can get really good playback, probably even at the high quality 10-bit resolution. So keep that in mind when you're transcoding this. Obviously, if you only wanna be working at an offline resolution, by all means, choose low bandwidth. Now, of course, again, because I'm also working on a Mac, I do also have access to the Apple ProRes codex as well, okay? Next, we have the option to choose our linked source quality, which in this case, you know, probably in most cases actually, you're gonna choose full. Now, next, apply source transformations, color encoding and frame flex. Now you remember, I made that frame flex adjustment inside of the source settings. Do I wanna bake that into the clip? Or do I wanna get in and be able to make changes after the fact? Well, because this footage is in 4K, it's double the size of the current project that I'm working on, which is only 2K, chances are I don't wanna bake in that frame flex information, so I'm simply gonna leave it blank. In most cases now, if I wanted to, I could run this in the background, or I could simply click transcode, and this clip would transcode. Now, just for my own curiosity's sake, I'm gonna set this to be standard quality, We'll leave it as the source's frame rate at the source's dimensions, and I'm gonna say go, just so that you can get an idea of how long this clip is gonna to take to transcode. Now you'll see that it says it's gonna take about, now I'm not speeding this up at all, this clip looks like it's about 17 seconds long, and it's gonna take about, about a minute to transcode. Now again, important to keep in mind, I'm running on a 12 core Mac Pro, I've got 32 gigs of RAM, it's Thunderbolt 2 to a 24 terabyte G-Speed Studio drive. So that's the system, that's sort of the benchmark that we're looking at here as far as the transcode speeds go. Your transcode speeds will obviously vary based on system, connection to the drive, and the speed of your hard drives. But basically what's gonna happen is, is that when this clip is done, we'll just give it another couple seconds. So you're gonna see in total about 51 seconds. So when it's done, all I'm gonna do is simply call this right up here. 
I'm just going to clear my screen here. I can now hit play. This is going to play back for me in real time. And of course, what's important to keep in mind is again, like I said, I can now simply right click on this clip, come down to source settings, and I still have access to all the frame flex and color encoding options, but I do not have access to that red options, the red options that I had originally, because remember, this clip is no longer a red clip, it is now an Avid Media Composer MXF file. So that's the only downside when working with red footage when you transcode it, is you're gonna lose those options that you were able to get in and adjust before. Okay, so that wraps up our look at transcoding. We've gone super in depth to sort of cover everything that you're you know, probably ever gonna need when it comes to transcoding. Now, in our next lesson, I'm going to talk about media management because that's a big one. And I'm going to talk about a fantastic third party utility that I think every editor should have, especially when it comes down to one of the other big questions that I get asked all the time. How do I archive the project that I'm currently working on? Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor video guys and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.